The Exchange by Yvette D. McGill, Chapter 2. Where was God? She starts off with a quote from T.D. Jakes. Sometimes what makes us insecure and vulnerable becomes the fuel we need to be overachievers. The antidote for a snake bite is made from the poison and the thing that makes you go backwards is the same force that will push you forward. As you may know, there will be times in life when you will inevitably feel as if God is not there. He's quiet. During these times, we lose hope and think it is the end. God has smiled and reminded me that it was just a bend, not the end. Trust the process, vet. When you're taking a test, the teacher is quiet. I feel like I went through a tried and tested phase most of my life. I really believed as a child that there was no way that this God that taught me that they taught me about every Sunday could be real. There was no way he could allow me to experience what I experienced and say that he loved me. But he actually did. I know without a doubt. I went through all of that so that I could live through it and help someone else. One day, I heard my daughter say to my mom, I love you too. What did that mean? My mom must have said, I love you to her. Well, the little girl in me jumped and I quickly said to my daughter, tell your grandmother she never told me she loved me. My daughter, of course, repeated what I said. And my mom's response was, she knows I do. Retreating into the bathroom and crying. I needed reminding. God had recently reminded me that although I had done a pretty good job saying and showing love to my daughters when they were young, what made me think they didn't need the same love now that they are grown? I was ashamed when I tried to recall the last time I had confessed my love to them now that they were women. God helped me see that they needed it as much now as they did back then. I love these te teaching moments from God readily admit I don't have all the answers, but I stand here teachable, eager to be a better version of George and Roddy's each day of my life. What did I learn from this? She says, you have to learn to love each person where they are, or you will stay disappointed. Another section in chapter two is titled time heals most wounds. Every day except Sunday, mom drank. I remember thinking how funny it was when I was grown, when she would call and say, you know, I've got to stop drinking this beer. As I laughed, she asked, what's so funny? As a child, I recall sitting there in the living room, bored to death, watching her fall asleep almost every night with this glass of beer in her hand. As the glass tipped and almost spilled on her every night, I secretly wished that it would. This was the extent of the relationship between us. This is how bored I was as a child. From Monday through Saturday nights, I watched my mom drink beer and fall asleep, hoping that she would waste it on herself. So as a grown woman, when she called me to say that she had wasted it on herself, I could do nothing but laugh. I had already gotten to a place where I had forgiven her and had healed from a lot of my childhood. So I was able to actually laugh and not cry about it. Aside from the beatings, mom loved to show me that no one wanted me. Once she was so upset with me about something to this day, I don't even recall what it was that she told me to go into my room and pack up everything. So I did. She told me someone from a girl's home was coming to get me. I fell asleep on those bags, sitting there in the hallway, waiting. The next morning, she woke me up and told me to put that shit back in the room. Nobody wanted me. Sorry. My deepest desire is to share these stories with you so that even though you can't go back and redo your childhood, like I can't go back and redo anything that happened in that house, you can get to a happy place where you're able to laugh instead of cry. What did I learn from this? Find the healing in your hell. That was so powerful. Find the healing in your hell. So many times we often go through trials and tribulations in our life, and not just as children, but as adults. 
and we're often wondering, how am I going to move past this? How am I going to get through this? And every life's test, I'm a firm believer, is a precursor to your testimony. <clears throat> Excuse me. Everyone is going to go through trials, tribulations, some worse than others. But there are often times in your life where you would be able to persevere if, number one, you believe in yourself and just know that God is going to take you through everything. It may not be at the moment that you need to go through it, but he's going to get you through it in his time. So just know that there's always healing in your hell. A lot of times we just have to go through. And I've told many friends and family members that the word says, although we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I stick just on that little piece. Because the word that I like to focus on is through. Whenever I hear that, I know through means that I'm not going to be there. I'm going to move past that. The through means, guess what? There's something on the other side. And so by reading this, when she says you're going to find healing in your hell, that's the one thing that comes to me. There is a through in your journey. That means that you're forever moving. We're not going to stop going through our journey, actually, until we die, in my opinion. So just know that as you're going through, the shadow means it's behind you. The shadow of all those things that you've gone through, that's behind you. That's why they say we walk through the shadow, through the valley of the shadow of death. The valley means we're going to go through some low times in our life. It's not always going to be high. It's not always going to be good. We're going to go through low points in our life, all of us. I'm not excluded. But the word says, although we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the valley, that means our low times, shadows are behind us. But the word I focus on, that I choose to focus on, is through. We're going to get through whatever it is that we are faced with. Even as children, we may not believe we can get through it. But some of us have been through some horrible things that our family members don't even know about. We'll probably never share However, if you just trust and believe in God, just know that he's going to get you through. So that's all I'm going to talk about out of chapter two. Please go out and get her book, The Exchange, <clears throat> excuse me, by Yvette D. McGill. And consider going to her website, www.yvettedmcgill.com. She has many other books for you to choose from, but this is The Exchange. The next reading, I'll go uh, over chapter three and read a snippet. I will not read the entire book to you because I want you to actually go and purchase her book. And thank you so much for listening. This is G Butterfly.